Hi guys, it's Jamie Christine here. So I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about myself a little bit more so you guys can understand why I always hate Missouri weather. I really, really hate it. Um, I was born and raised in Missouri. I'm not going to tell you guys where I was am from. Um, my mom was born and raised in Missouri. My father was born and raised in Missouri. Um, my grandma on my mom's side was born and raised in Missouri. Hey, you don't play with the yarn. My grandparents, my Nana wasn't born in Missouri. She was born, honestly, I don't know. There's no, I have to get in contact with my grandma and ask about that. But my papa, the one who had recently passed away, uh, he was born in Illinois. Yeah. And so was his other sister that his father had. But my papa's mother, she had another child. Which these two sisters of his are half siblings. One's related to him by his father and one's related to him by his mother. His mother... Uh, she was born and raised in Missouri as well, I believe. I'm not going to say much. I'm not going to say that's true. I'm not going to say anything, but I believe that. Um, my father's side, um, I don't know. You want to be in the special video too? Come here. Yeah. Say hi. Okay, or not. Um, my father's grand, my father's father, my grandpa, I don't know much about him. He wasn't in my life. And like I said in my last video, he passed away back in 2010. So I don't know much about him. So, and no one really talked much about him. Um, hush it. Um, what I do know is that. My grandmother, on my father's side of the family, was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. Her parents came from Germany when they were, when her mom was pregnant with her. And the thing is, I did a D ancestry DNA test, and I'm, I have a booklet around here somewhere. I am mostly European. I have. Two, three, 25% of something. I just know that I'm mostly European because both sides of my family come from Germany. Yeah. I ain't gonna say much about my last name. I ain't gonna say much about my other names that I'm related to. But... One, on my mom's side of the family, you can automatically tell, it's German, um, which is, was my papa's n name, my, my papa's last name. Uh, why are you being so clingy? <laughs> Don't hit the camera. Um, my mom's biological father's name is... They are Scottish. My last name is Irish. Um, yeah. And my grandma's maiden name, which is my mom, my father's mother, she's German as well. I also have English, like England. Let's see, I have two sides Germany. I have Irish, Scottish. Uh, I have England, English, and um, and so far a lonely handful of names because I grew up around these people, so yeah. Anyways, I guess my cat wants attention, and she's looking at me.
welcome to my life. You like to be a girl. You is a good girl. And um yeah. Um I was born and raised in Missouri, so was my brother. I was born two eleven AM when my brother was born nine fifty five AM. My mom was twenty two and a half two 22 and a half hours of labor with me. My brother died and a half. I was a dry birth. From what my mom says, I was a very painful birth. My brother just flew right out. Um, I was born in an hospital. Everyone was born in a hospital. Some won't, some are. Um, I was born in this hospital that has been around for years, years, years. I was also, I also had, uh, when I was being born, trainee doctors in the room. Um, actually, I have some booby foodles. Miff, miff. There they are. Give me a moment. <sighs> I'm cold. I have my windows open, so sorry about that. Try not to show a lot of people, but there's these people that have passed away, so I will show you some. This was taken August uh, 8th of 2000, which I was born August 2nd of 2000. So this was like, I was... Five days old. I was born uh, six, ounces, six pounds and 15 ounces. Look how cute I am, like... This a little darling. Actually, my mom told me when I was growing up a lot that I was actually a really easy baby. My brother, not so much. Now, my brothers, me and my brother are 11, uh, 10 months apart. I'm the oldest by 10 months every time his birthday comes around. Now, I have this dress up on a shadow box because it's been passed down through family through family members and everything. If it will let me get it out, I will show you what dress I'm talking about because I don't want to take it down and I don't want to show you guys my room. So, this dress was all right. A little bit, a little bit background on this dress. This dress was made by my nana's mother. For my nana and ever since then it's been passed down to family members to family members now the last time this dress was worn it was 20 years ago and then when my mom wore it it has been almost 40 years ago and my grandma 50 and so far it's gone back now this is me Papa um, had written this on the back of it. It's sliding down. And if you can tell, this is the date that he put on in my name. Yeah, that's it's been a while ago. This is the dress I was talking about. 
It's hand handmade. I also have little shoes. Don't mind my little baby feet. But, yeah. This is the dress I was talking about. It's a very, very old dress. It's over 100 years old. Now, see, my father's side of the family, he has a sister. And I really don't want to show this photo because I have another one, but this is a really cute photo. It was back in September of 2000. And it shows the names and which says great grandmother and Jamie September of 2000 which um my aunt on my father's side had work at a Harley Davidson place and so she had gotten me a Harley Davidson onesie and this is my nana which who is married to my papa who died back in 2010 she looks so cute with her little perm. My aunt on my mom's side is a hairdresser. All right. And every time that woman came into the salon and she had already had her hair perm and everything, my aunt would just cut it all off because she hated the perms. Hated the perms. But she gives her son a perm. Now, this outfit was from my great-grandmother. Not my great, uh, yeah, my great, my two times great, no, one time great grandmother, who, she made this for my baby shower, and sent it through the mail, like, she actually spent the time, handcrafted it and everything, and then after I was born, she died, yeah, I know, but here's me, this is back in 2000 as well. This is, like, this is, like, I'm a couple months old. But if you can tell, like, this blanket, the booties, and the little over here was all handcrafted by my great-grandmother at the time. She wasn't related to me by blood, but she is by marriage. But that's, was, mm, probably try to find a photo of my papa. I mean, the hevel, devil man himself is very cute. Mostly when he was younger. But I don't think I have some. Oh, here he is. Yes. Now, this is my papa. The man who I was very torn up about. This was back in 2000s, as always. And here he is. He's feeding me. And you see this ring right here? That's the ring that my Nana had given him. And he was just, he was very, very loving man growing up. I was more closer with him than I was with my Nana. It, it's me and my aunt on my mom's side of the family. Um, we loved him more because Nana scared us more. But my mom and my grandma both loved Nana. Is that they were scared of Papa? It's just it's very. I know when Nana passed away, it was heartbroken, heartbreaking, and then I love my Papa because I love Nana. Even though I love Papa more, I still love Nana, so I kept being around Papa more because, you know, when I always had this thing going on, when Nana died, I felt that she was always around Papa, always. Always around Papa. 
So, I love being around Papa because I can be with the two people that I love most who practically raised me and practically helped me become who I am now. And, um, losing Papa that day was very heartbreaking. Very heartbreaking. I literally, he was in the VA for about a week. He was there up until the day of Thanksgiving, which he got out of. And then my grandparents decided to take him down to like after he had since be put in. And then a couple days later, he had to go to KU. And the doctors had told my aunt, because my aunt had taken him in and put him in and everything, and I uh, had told her that a couple of days after getting him in the hospital that he had, he ain't gonna make it. He was having hard times breathing. He was not himself anymore. He... He... He was slowly losing it. And when you see your 86-year-old grandfather who was always there for you, who practically raised you and you had to start helping him remember stuff and being there, even though he, he you knew he wouldn't want you to be there, seeing him at like this hurts a lot. To the point that I was, I went there at 10 a.m. I had started my new job, and I'm actually really grateful that my boss had let me go because he said, because they're trying to get me on, I was telling him that I have, I'm probably going to lose my grandfather, and he's like, that's all right, just let me know if you need to go anywhere to the hospital or something. So this day of my first time starting my job, I get the call that I need to come up there and say my last goodbyes. Yeah, starting off a new job like that is kind of really hard for me. Because it holds a lot of negativity for me because that's the second, this is, has been the second time with this job that someone who I love have passed away while I was on duty. When I walked in, it was pretty much 10, not even 11 o'clock. And he, I walked in, he looked at me, he, like, he went from being this dull person inside. I even saw his eyes, like, lit up, like, Jamie's here. Because every time I came in, every time I saw him, I always bring joy because I was excited to see him. I wasn't bringing negativity with other people in my family. He had bad things to do. So, I was there from 10 a.m. to 7 just watching him deteriorate and going farther and farther into this hole that he started to become someone I didn't even know anymore. One thing I won't forget about that day is when the doctor, when the nurse came in and, and asked him what day and month and year it is. And Papa knew where he was at. He was at KU. But he couldn't understand what month and year it was because all he kept saying was January of 2010 and January of 2010 is when my Nana died. He wanted to see her a lot because I had asked him back in the VA when he was still okay. Is what are you going to do if you go see Nana again? Or what will you do if you could see Nana again? And he said, I will give that woman a bright, great big kiss. And I'm just really hurt. 
and sour and happy all at the same time. And I just don't understand how I can be three different emotions that are on three different ends of the scale and feel all three of them. <laughs> I'm happy that Papa's back with um, Nana and I'm happy that he's not in any more pain but what hurts the most is I what the hurts most is I told him a long time ago is you gotta make it until I'm t I'm 19 and he did he made it until I was 19 that what hurts the most anyways see y'all Bye.